Well, hi, everybody, and welcome into the MASL Playoffs. Eric Bergru, Nick Vassos. We are live. Well, not live, but we're at the Soccer Dome uh, here uh, at practice, and uh, we are talking MASL Playoffs. The Comets are the three seed. They will be taking on the six-seeded Dallas Sidekicks. Eric, um, playoffs are here, and uh, we've been waiting for this moment for a while. The Comets have clinched the three spot, as you know, uh, early in the regular season. Um, I don't know, what are your initial thoughts of the playoffs as we get rolling? So what's interesting is conventional wisdom, which I do not believe in, by the way. Conventional wisdom is the Kansas City Comets started off really strongly and then faded at the end. But if you look at their lineup the last couple of weeks, there were a lot of changes we're seeing in practice. The players we expected to see all, all the way that the players that you would expect to see in the playoffs. And so I would discount quite a bit the results the last couple of weeks. This is the, the Comets lineup that has a, a chance of making a serious run in the mm -hmm. NHL playoffs. Yeah, we've uh, we've seen a couple of players back in the lineup. We got Nacho back there. Uh, Alessia is back in there. That's on a Benji. Uh, Benji is back. I, I, Leo Gibson's going to have to make some choices to bring sixteen down to Dallas, and I, 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 that's probably a good thing for the Comets right that's now. That's what you want is competition. Yeah, right? I think uh, they've been working on finishing too. One of the challenges we saw this past weekend was the ability to finish. What were seemed to us from the broadcast booth some pretty open goals and so they work on their finishing uh, a little bit more compact and uh, communicative in the back on defense they're going to be in pretty good shape yep and you know this year their opponent uh, in the Dallas sidekicks is one that the Comets have never seen before right not in the playoffs but they've seen them a lot well, the last couple of years uh, in the COVID shortened season of uh, 2021 they played Dallas a lot, and then six times this year. Uh, we call them our besties. They call <laughs> us uh, that, that we're their besties. Uh, can't say enough about the coaching uh, job that Ricardinho has done this year. Uh, my pick for coach of the year. I'll second that. Juan Gamboa in goal has been sensational. If you look at his re uh, the sidekick's record with and without him, it's a stark difference. I've said many times my thoughts about Jamie Lovegrove and, and likely the uh, newcomer of the year in the league, Luis Morales, has been terrific. The matchup I want to see, Mike Jones on defense, maybe drawing Rion Marquez. Uh, once again, Marquez, uh, he gets a lot of attention from opposing coaches. The ability for players to run off him so he doesn't have to do all the work by himself can make the difference in this Yeah, series. Mike Jones, real big defender and uh, probably amongst uh, the contenders for defender of the year, he and Chad Vandegrift down in Florida. And, Maybe Escalante from uh, Chihuahua. A lot of good uh, defenders in this league, and Mike Jones is one of them. It's something that the Comets offense is going to have to uh, take into consideration when trying to get the ball into the target position. And just at, overall, just as a playoff opponent, uh, Eric, as you know, uh, the, for the last, I don't know, maybe decade or so, the Comets, their first-round opponent, opponent has been the Milwaukee Wave for so many years. And uh, we're going to get a different opponent. And I think this year... From, from a big picture standpoint of the MASL, uh, and that is the matchups that we have this year. They're not, uh, they're not you know, divisional matchups in the playoffs. We're, uh, they're they're league-wide. I mean, we're, we're seeing teams have to travel great distances for the home-and-home -home series with the extra game. And, and, and Kansas City and Dallas, you know, in terms of travel, these two teams are only an hour and a half apart. So uh, that'll help both teams in terms of recovery and, uh, and 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 you know and being strong for the next game. If we learned anything from last year's semifinals when Kansas City hosted the Ontario Fury, you can battle, you battle, and then there's 15 minutes of glory or pain that awaits you if the if the series is tied one to one. And so, who has legs at the end could make a difference. Travel could make a difference. But these other matchups are interesting because you think about Baltimore and Chihuahua, both. Uh, taking a little bit of grief for their small fields. Well, now they get to play each other on the small <laughs> fields, which is going to be interesting. St. Louis and Florida is sort of an interesting matchup. They don't play each other a lot. And uh, St. Louis played really well, I thought, at the end of the season. And then Milwaukee and San Diego. So Milwaukee claims, or some people in Milwaukee have claimed that they have the last legitimate Ron Newman Cup championship. Oh, right. <laughs> they're going to find out really quickly because they're, they're facing the title holders. And I think that's going to be an intriguing matchup for a lot of different reasons. Yeah, and, and it just kind of underline what we just talked about, what I mentioned, and that is San Diego has to travel twice. 
And while San Diego has this gaudy, what, 23-0-1 record, you know, they still have to travel to Milwaukee, and then they have to travel back to San Diego. Uh, we'll see how that affects play. And, you know, it looks like Milwaukee has got a lot of their players back. So we might find the Milwaukee, the 1-8 game, a lot maybe more competitive than some people might give it on the surface. Start with the back, because I always like to start with goalkeeping. Joey Capinos has been sensational, and I think he's carried that team a lot, at least defensively. They got Marcio Leite back. Alex Bradley has has uh, adapted really well to playing defender. You move up into the midfield, LSO is terrific. Sure, Ian Bennett, I'd be 26, the likely MVP of the league, but Andre Haynes back. And then somebody who's typically uh, a defender or has been, has been playing up front is Derek Huffman. He's back. And if you look at Milwaukee's record without Derek Huffman versus with Derek Huffman, it's a stark difference, too. Mm. Let's talk about the 2-7 game real quick, and that is uh, St. Louis and Florida. Uh, you just uh, pointed out how effective Milwaukee is with Derek Huffman. There's one player for St. Louis that has a great record when he is in the lineup. Talk about him. So, so again, we'll start with goalkeeping. Poyo uh, in goal, and we featured him as a, in our pregame spotlight in our last regular season game against them, I believe, I don't have this memorized, but I think they're eight and two with them. And you think about their record without him, it's, it, it, it's not terribly good. Makes a lot of saves and he snuck up right at the end, winning a best save percentage for all goalkeepers in the league. So he, he stops a lot of shots. He stopped a lot of common shots last week in the, that last regular season. Game. Yeah, uh, very, very interesting uh, series. But the matchups uh, are great. Um, and we could talk a little bit about Baltimore and Chihuahua. I suppose we touched on a little bit. The fields might come into conversation here. But, uh, you know, Baltimore, when it comes to playoff season, you know, they've won a lot of championships. They're good in postseason. They've got Vinny Dantas back there. And, boy, does he look comfortable playing in a Baltimore uniform. And, of course, they've got Van Zela, who just wins championships. Won it last year for San Diego. And, for me, that's the player I want to look, for, I want to look at because – you need his leadership, it, it, particularly on the road in Chihuahua. It's a, it's a smaller field. He's used to playing on a smaller field. But Chihuahua brings so much pressure on. And it's not just field players. Goalkeeper will get Valdivino, so get into it as well. And so the ability to keep your defense organized and then, then read the game well and then counter. Uh, somebody will have to figure this out in Chihuahua this year in terms of how to match against them and how to beat them. Uh, they've been terrific lately. I looked at their roster the other day, uh, Chihuahua's roster, and um, I mean, they got seven, seven people, seven players that have scored 20 or more goals. They are, they are remarkable, and they are so hard to stop. Think about Baltimore, think about Baltimore and Chihuahua. Baltimore catches a lot of flack around the league for their home field advantage. Yeah. But if you look at records and you look at Chihuahua, I think Chihuahua has figured out even better how to leverage that home field than Baltimore has. So it's going to be an interesting series just to see how teams adapt. And as you said earlier, the travel between Mexico mm -hmm. and the East Coast for both teams, it's going to be a challenge. Yeah, should be a, a great matchup. Uh, so Kansas City and Dallas, Kansas City the three seed, Dallas the six seed. First game is Saturday night down in Dallas. And then game two is back here in Kansas City on Tuesday, April the 12th. And we need you there loud and proud. So 888 comets or Ticketmaster.com or KCComets.com. Practice going on here for the Kansas City Comets. A lot of competition out there on the field. Competition, as you said. Well, it'll be interesting to see which 16 make the trip down to Dallas, but this looks like a team that's ready to, to take what they learned last year. They got to the semis last year. That's not where they want to end this year. Okay, it's going to be a lot of fun. The MASL playoffs are here, and Eric and I will do our part to share all of the great stories uh, in the weeks ahead.